All right, guys, here's our little carrier condenser. I think it's three tons. We're gonna turn it on and see what the uh, pressures run. Keeping in mind, I took some refrigerant out of it just so it wouldn't be so god awful high when it ran. There's a new carrier system right there that evidently replaced the one that was sitting here last time I was here. So someone has replaced that one because it was doing the exact same thing this one was doing. Discharge was going out the side here. No top discharge whatsoever. Coil is relatively clean, so it should have some top discharge. There's a new fan motor I had to put in it, but I ordered a new blade and we're gonna see, you see the blade down there, if that helps. Let's take a look at the pressures. Let's keep in mind that my temperature uh, clamps are not hooked on right now. Discharge here, no discharge all the way across the top. Just a little bit here, and coming out of the condenser, so the condenser is going to be very hot. So right now we're looking at a condensing temperature of 140 degrees, kind of toasty. 336 over 75 psi. Before it was well over 400. We were reaching the internal relief point, which you can hear it while it ran. So let's put that blade on and see if we can't make things any better. Okay, here's our old blade taken out, and there's our new blade. If you lift up the old blade, there's a noticeable difference as far as how much it weighs. It weighs probably twice as much as a new one and it's twice as thick. So in the area of durability, the old blade kicks new blades ass. This one's put together a little bit differently. Some ridges here, I guess for strength, because obviously the thickness of the metal is not gonna represent much strength. It's our pitch right there. We'll put it on, we'll see how it works. They're very similar looking, other than just a few minor features on them. So we'll see how they work. All right guys, here we are looking at our new pressures. And I would love to say this is all from the fan blade, but that's not exactly true. We have a 231 over 58, which is not super, but a lot better than we were before. Now the fan blade dropped it from around. You see all this dust up here? Well, I'll explain why that's there in just a moment. The fan blade dropped it from around 330 or wherever it was before down to around 290 to 300. So the fan did make a difference. But the issue out here is that there's nowhere to find water to clean the coil. Now the coil looks clean. But alas, what I did was I took my good old nitrogen bottle and my air hose and kind of blew it out. That dropped it the other 70 points to 231. So it makes a real big difference. Now, the pressure's kind of fluctuated between about 228 up to around 240 and back. And our suction pressure was down there freezing a little bit lower in the 55 to 60 range. So we'll let it run for a little while. We'll add a little bit of juice. And hopefully it'll be a lot better off than it was before. All right, guys, now that we have the airflow a whole lot better, we have a much increased airflow. It's still not coming out the top. It's more of out the side, but it's a whole lot better than before. We're running a 230 over 58 with a superheat of right around 50, 55, fluctuating in there. We're going to take it down to around 25. I can't go inside, but I know that's going to be real close to our reading inside. It's just a guesstimate, not scientific, but it should be close, and I can fine-tune it from there if necessary. We'll go ahead and put the refrigerant in and see how she runs. She should still have an elevated head pressure because we have a lot of areas on the coil that are damaged. There's a lot of area on the coil that's no longer allowing any airflow. You see them here, all through the bottom and top, and there's more on the other side. So there's a whole lot of the area that's been taken away over the years. These older, less efficient condensers typically run a higher head pressure because there's not a whole lot of condenser area on them anyway because it's three tons. You see how small it is compared to the one next to it. It's huge and it's probably the same size or pretty close to this one as far as tonnage. Well guys, we have numbers that are a little bit better than what we had originally. Our superheat's coming down. Hopefully it settles out here in a second. 
Pressures are still a little bit elevated on the head pressure, but I'd like to see it once everything settles down and the temperature drops inside. I don't know how hot it is in there. Like I said, I'm going to assume from what they've told me, it is between 80 and 90 degrees. So our superheat should be somewhere 25 to 30 range. We're going a little bit too far here. I have to withdraw a little bit. We'll see if it rebounds back up. But definitely a lot better than before. It's good news and happy news for the people inside here. And bad news, people spent several thousand dollars and they could just uh, probably fix those. Oh well.